Welcome, welcome, welcome to Behind the 90 with Nika. And I want to take a moment to always explain what the 90% means. 90% of what we go through in life is about our past. Only 10% is about the present. So that 90% represent our story. And our story has a lot to do with how we move and how people experience us in life. So today's guest is a very, very special guest. Um, and it makes me feel very special because he's my oldest son. But the cool thing about him being my oldest son is I didn't have to go through any of the labor pains to have him. So I want to welcome my son, my oldest son, Marcus. Welcome, Marcus, and thank you so much for being my first guest. I wouldn't have had it any other way. So can you tell our listeners who you are and how did we come to meet one another, seeing that I did not give birth to you, but you are my baby? Yeah, I want to say when we actually met, I want to say I was about two. You know, I feel like a lot of times I hear people tell me about how we met than like how my memory actually recollects it but I remember dad introducing you a couple different times at the house um, I remember we would go visit sometimes like um, auntie and all that stuff I think it was a it was definitely a slow process of you just being more present in my life I think that's really how I remember the first time meeting you, not like one specific moment. Yeah, when I met your father, and this here's the interesting thing. I was always the girl who would not date guys with kids, right? I said, if you have a kid, it's not a go for me. I'm like, I want to be the first to have that child with that person. So that was my, that was my mind then. And so when I met your dad, he was a different kind of guy. I hadn't met a man like him. So I was open. I was open to dating someone with a kid. And then when I met you, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like icing on the cake. You were so kind and sweet. Um, mm. So <laughs> That's how I was back then. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you would be in your, uh, when I would come over your house, at first, I was a little reluctant to meet you only because I felt like, man, if I get attached to this, you know, once I started to spending time with you guys, I said, if I get attached and we don't work out, that's going to be, that's not going to be cool. So needless to say, it worked. Um, but mm. you're right. So we started to integrate the relationship. Um, so like you said, we were two. You were two. And then... At four, we got married. So we were that blended family. You, you know, at the time you were still calling me Nika, right? I remember that. You would call me my Nika. I remember, yeah. So when your dad told you, so we're going to fast forward. Like you said, we spent a lot of time together. We dated. You know, you were with us often. You were with me sometimes, um, just me and you. And like I said, we had a good relationship. So when when your dad did your dad tell you that he was going to ask me to marry him, or or how did you feel mm. when he said uh, we were getting married? I I got my memory. What was your memory? So I definitely remember multiple conversations about you being my mom. I want to say when you weren't at the house, Dad definitely pulled me aside. This is like one of my like very older memories um and he was like hey you know something along the lines of i just want to let you know that like i love your mom you know who birthed you but just know that like i really love anika and i want her to be my wife essentially um and I'm, i i knew back then right i was so young but i remember having an excited feeling i remember feeling like okay like my conception of what love was was expanding um 
and of course i remember like the actual day you guys getting married um i really wanted to ride <laughs> in the in the uh limo that you guys pulled out of um when everything was all over i just wanted to be with you i think that whole reunion right like all of us coming together right was um has always been very something very special um and i think you guys made those memories um something very positive something uh filled with something filled with love something something very powerful okay you know that's awesome because i remember when we got married I, I can even visualize the picture you're because the first thing that happened you got baptized and before we got married your dad asked me to be your godmother and at this time i knew that we would probably get married but he had not asked yet so may of 2000 mm you got baptized and he had asked me to be your godmama I'm like sure okay I would love to because again you were my baby and we had not gotten married yet but like I said he asked me to be your godmom and so I accepted and we went through the whole ceremony now again mind you this was in May of 2004 right so he didn't propose okay. marriage until July 2004 <laughs> So I'm thinking, wow, he's asking me okay. to do something so honorable to be his godmom. And I still hadn't really met uh, your mom yet, right? We met at the, at the ceremony. That's when we officially met at your, at your baptism. That's, that's charged. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. A, okay, at the baptism. Right. The baptism. And so, me, of I course, see. me and your mom, we hit it off. Mm extremely well that is one of my best friends um yeah. that's not how we met guys though um, i met uh marcus my uh fred's former wife you know through them so i don't want it people say oh my gosh they were best friends and but anyway um i just wanted to clear that up so like i said i met your mom we hit it off and then you know your 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 dad proposed marriage and when we got married, it was a very short engagement. I remember your, you saying, we're married. And that, that just warmed my heart because it was a marriage for all of us, the three of us, me, you, and your dad, right? I, I came in as that third parent. And so how did you manage or adjust to, like you say, you were two when I came into your life, so... You know, the whole dynamic of the three parents, you know, it was familiar to you. Or how did it make you feel to have three parents? Well, I also want to, you know, add a bit of context. Um, you know, when I would be a lot, a lot of a lot of like the parenting kind of came from being picked up by who, right, at daycare. It was like, oh, you know, you need, Marcus, you know, you need to coordinate, like, who's going to pick you up from daycare? Is it going to be your mom today? Oh, they forgot. Oh, okay. Is it going to be your dad today? Is it going to be your grandparents? So I was staying at Granny and Grandpa's house um, with Mom. So in a way, you know, when Mom was working, there kind of was a fourth parent um, because there was, like, grandparents that you had to um, interface with and, you know, respect and dialogue with so it was a bit of a different way of um i guess upholding different parents expectations because you know dad he's a little bit stricter you know he's the disciplinarian um you know grandparents they would spoil you so you know you could get away with xyz um you were very like also a little strict i wouldn't say <laughs> as strict as like dad could be but um i think you you definitely introduced another level of emotional um maturity that you expected um and that you helped prosper and grow and i think that was another lens that i wasn't used to growing up around because mom and dad and grandma they they weren't explicitly trying to teach me um, emotional maturity and growing in those things. So that was a different 
a different way of communicating like when I was hurt or when I was upset you know you were a parent that was very vocal about tapping into your emotions I remember we definitely kind of went back and forth as I got older um about expressing myself a little bit more and then yeah mom she was a little bit more on the lax side too in terms of parenting um but I think in all those scenarios to wrap up right <laughs> this, good. um it afforded me to be independent it, it taught me to be independent from an early age because yeah as just like each parent was parenting you you had to respond to each parent a little bit differently so could that you know like you said we all played our roles i think your dad had his role i had my role you know your mom had her role and i think we 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 i don't want to say played the we uh, facilitated those roles i i think okay I'm, i don't think it was perfect but i feel like we all had our strong points that we wanted to impart to you intentionally unintentionally there were things I think your your mom is she's she always inspired me to just kind of just relax and let your hair down a little bit. So you needed that. You had that balance where me and your dad, we like you said, we were a little more strict, but I feel like the three of us together, we provided that balance because sometimes you do need to just let your hair down. Sometimes you don't need to always have, you know, things all, you know you know do this do that turn right turn left you know you don't always need that all the time so I think your your mom brought you know structure and she brought what I learned from her this freedom to just chill because I, I, I can be a little intense with my expectations because I'm always thinking about future how people experience you and I know I had to kind of relax on that because you can run the, the risk of teaching your kids to be people pleasers. And, you know, you just got to be careful. So, look, so when you think about having three parents, being at me and your dad's house, then going to your mom's house, what was that experience like? You know, being in a blended family, yes, we're all getting along, but I'm sure there had to be times where man, I just want to be in one spot. How how did it make you feel to have to go from one week you're at this house and then the next week you're at this house? And we, we had a schedule and we lived by that schedule. There was a schedule. Oh, man, yeah, you're right. You're right, no, because I think it was like Mondays and Tuesdays we'd be at Mom's and then Wednesday, Thursday would be at Dad's and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we would like alternate. <laughs> so you're you're right. Yeah. You're right. We definitely did stick to a schedule. Um, I think, you know, the first way I experienced it was like I I would see, you know, the other kids at school, like they would just always be going back to the same home and I was like, yo, that's crazy. <laughs> like I can't imagine I can't imagine just like going home at the same time every day, knowing who's gonna pick you up, all this other stuff. Um, but you know, in 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 contrast to that, I also did meet other kids that had similar situations, and so you know, it wasn't a totally foreign concept to me as a kid. Um, it meant that I had to be very transparent. Again, like it, it it put responsibilities onto me because it meant that I couldn't leave, you know, my notebook at mom's house and forget about it right i because if i was at dad's that means that we would have to take another trip over to mom's and like all this kind of back and forth um it meant that i had to be very honest i think that was definitely a challenge for me because it was <laughs> it was relatively easy to lie right <laughs> it was like oh did you have chocolate you know today marcus oh no i didn't so can i can you buy me something <laughs> from the store Right. But Grammy, Grandma already got me something, or you know, Mom already got. So it it was um it was definitely again learning to be independent and mature, and um, I think it made it, it it also tested how much I respected my parents at different moments in my life. Um, 
because I would I would go to get advice from you guys individually mm. on things that were bothering me. And so I had to know, I kind of had to know, you know, okay, can I talk about girls to mom? Okay. Can I talk to girls, about, you know, to dad? What, what advice am I getting? If I'm dealing with, you know, friendship that are, you know, crumbling or that aren't as strong as I want, you know, who do I go to? So it was it was a little bit of trial and error because I had to learn how to trust each of you guys individually with um, different things. But I would say any other pain points, um, I think, you know what, it also meant when it came to holidays and like uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day, it... I think it also kind of brought up like, okay, like it's, it's dad always kind of facilitated or taught me that like your moms are the most important thing, you know, in the world. Like the women in your life should be at the forefront of your respect, of your love, of your intentionality, all those kind of things. So yeah, I think it just meant more love. It meant more responsibility. It meant more intentional intentional acts of kindness yeah so when i hear you what i hear is that there are pros and cons right you i think the thing that kind of touched me what you just said it's just like that going back or back and forth creates this layer of responsibility that oh i gotta remember to take this with me because i'm gonna be leaving for school over this house right and so it almost had me a little choked up and because uh, I really do think that we provided, you know, not a perfect, you know, um, situation, but a good situation, right? We tried to be very intentional about making life seamless for you and never wanting you to feel stressed. And, you know, oftentimes I would ask you, you know, Marcus, am I doing a good job? You know, is there anything that you need from me? Um, and I, I don't know if you felt comfortable you know, telling me because as your stepmom, I never wanted to feel like a stepmom. I didn't want it to feel like a stepmom situation because sometimes stepmoms have a bad reputation. Um, and I never wanted, and I know there's a lot of great stepmoms, right? But sometimes when they say the stepmom, it takes away to me the, the value of what stepmoms do offer. So I often like to call myself your bonus mom. And your mom has always been so gracious with sharing you, you know, if I take you to the doctor, hey, can I, you know, I can take him or, you know, we kind of switch off of who, you know, whoever's schedule would allow, she would take you. Sometimes I would take you. So I appreciated her allowing me to step into a mother role, right? And not the step parent role where you have limited, you know, interaction with that, that child because she really allowed me to be your mom and she didn't separate it um but I can recall when you would go back to your mom's house it would be sadness for me um mm. and I felt that I definitely did mom. because I got Yes, we had to share you, but when you grow close to someone, it's just like, wow. I wish the situation, although, you know, I love our family, it was hard sometimes because if we are interacting, you're having such a good time, and then you gotta leave. I know. That wasn't always easy for me, and I remember I would talk, I'm gonna get myself together. I remember I would talk to your dad about it, and not that I would ever say, you know, Marcus can't go to his mom, that, that's not even a question, but it was difficult, you know, um, saying, oh, he, he has to, you know, we, we, we did this and we didn't spend time together, and now he has to, to go, so I often wondered, how did you feel, because, yes, I know you love your mom, like, being separated from your mom for the time that you were with us, and yes... You tried to provide the best uh, environment for you, but I know that had to be hard for you to not always be with your your mom. 
No, I totally, I, I, I felt that. Um, and it was difficult, of course, to, after you have a great, you know, couple days at dad's house to leave and, you know, have to come back um, and pick up where you left off, right? Um, and the same thing is true when you spend the last couple days at mom's or dad's and you got in trouble or, you know, you um, maybe hurt someone's feelings and now next time you come back, you have to enter and, um, you know, you have to, like, reconcile um, because you don't want, like, every day that you spend at mom's to be, like, oh, you're in trouble or, like, you know, you can't talk to someone or... And it's, and it's actually crazy that you were a parent that was very vocal about um you know even even in like uh faith um related in terms of you know being able to turn a new leaf like to be able to forgive um quickly because you know now that I think about it if we there were some scenarios where I had hurt someone's feelings or someone had hurt my feelings and if we hadn't been able to talk or just interact with each other the same way then like those days that we spent together would go by just like that and it definitely made um i think it made moments of grieving difficult too i remember um i want to say back in 2015 um you know grandpa ended up passing away um my mom's mom i mean mom's dad and, you know, I wasn't necessarily super close to my grandfather as much as I wanted to be, but that was a moment where I wasn't sure how to respond to my emotions and to my feelings. Um, and I think it brought up the ways that I was used to coping with, you know, emotional trauma or or grief in those moments um and I think those were a couple months or at least a year where I was maybe a little detached from my emotions and that I think was where some tension between you and I had really come to a, a peak because I wasn't really the days that I that the, the limited days that I would spend at each person's house became a little bit more restricted because I wasn't responding or really um, giving or being present in growing the relationship um, that I was used to doing. So I think it was actually you who really told me that, listen, like, if you really want to be a man one day, like, you are going to have to learn how to manage your emotions and manage your feelings. Um, and that was a really powerful moment, especially going through high school. Like, I mean, all teenagers are going to be challenged mm -hmm. with, you know, understanding who they want to be and their emotions and all that stuff. So, but I think, again, a part of, a part of growing in emotional maturity and dealing with these um, hard to talk about topics was you know, influenced by whose house I was staying at, right? Like, it was influenced... Wow, explain yeah. that more. When you say it was... Ex so do you feel like there were times in this setting, I have to be this way, in this setting, I'm free to be this way? You know, explain that more. Yeah. I think it was... Uh... I think it was what I was, it was different affordances, right? It was what I was afforded to do. Um, you know, there's a routine that you learn early or that's built when you come into the house, right? When I'm at mom's, the first thing I do is, you know, I don't even have a chance to like put my bags down before mom and I are talking. And we can talk for an hour, we can talk for 15 minutes. Before I even get up to my room, um, 
you know, at dad's house, sometimes it's a little bit more like, okay, you know, first of all, you, you hug each other when you like first get into the house. And then, you know, you can go up to your room, like you can hang out a little bit, but then eventually you're going to have to come back down and like talk to family and all that stuff. Um, but I think these different routines were different windows into what you, what I was expected to filter, um, and share with different Mm -hmm. family members, um, what I had time to share with different family members. And yeah, it definitely means that you have different personas, um, sometimes that you put on. I've, I've, I think sometimes mm-hmm. like we've, we've had this conversation where it's like, Mark is like, you know, you don't have yes. to feel like you're a chameleon, right? Like you don't feel like you have to like pander to like all the people in your, in your life and say yes to every single person in your life. Like you don't have to be that kind yeah. of person. Um, but again, I think that was just a habit that I had, that I had like grown into, um, because it was easier, right? It, it made, it made interactions very quick, right? Where it's like, you're going from one place to another, like, I didn't want to have to unpack or like re-explain every single moment of my life to the, to, to the the next parent, right? Um, just because we had spent a couple of days apart from each other, but sometimes it made it easier when you could just be like, yes, 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 yes. What do you want me to do? What do you need me to do? You know what? Yeah. And it just made it simpler for me to just go back into my room and just, I don't know. I think, I think it, it, it was, it was a habit and it was a filter that I wasn't used to just taking relationships individually and gently and slowly and like allowing space for us both to water the relationship I think I was just rushing through it so that we didn't have to deal with um if I had had a bad day or if you or if you had had a bad day like am I just going to smile and you know reassure you like I think it made it made certain mm. it made certain interactions um, different. Yeah. So. Do you feel like it? And that's uh, I, I appreciate that uh, that visual that insight um, because, like you said, you had two households that you were a part of with different, you know, rules. And standards, um, and feeling like, and I and I remember, and I think I didn't really consider a lot, man. You know, if I make spaghetti, I remember at some point me and your mom we started to coordinate, so you would have to have no the way. same thing because if I make spaghetti, oh. and then she makes spaghetti. Mm. Here you are having spaghetti again. <laughs> Two weeks ago. And so I remember. And that didn't happen okay. all the time. We didn't coordinate okay. all the time. But you were you were not the kid to complain. But at some point, I think she even kind of brought it to my attention. Hey, Nika, what did you guys cook? Because I don't want to repeat it. And Marcus has already had it. So we wanted to create, although this, you know, um, unified experience. But at the same time didn't want to want to overwhelm you with uh, just things not being things things being so similar That's it. right as opposed to like I said you know cooking and stuff like that we wanted you to have that variation like man I just already had spaghetti and you weren't the kid that would complain either and so that's why I was always encouraging you because I knew because you were in two separate households you were living in two separate households I wanted to make sure I wasn't saying your dad's house, your mom's house. I wanted to make sure, because it's so easy to say that. Instead of saying, your house, you know, this, your house, these are both your houses. So I wanted to make sure that that was communicated and it was absorbed in your psyche that you have two homes. Because oftentimes you would say dad's house, mom's house, and you weren't claiming a house. And so I wanted you to claim a house because I wanted you to feel like you belong. And I think in a step parenting, 
blended family situation, we got to be careful that, and although you may not have been taking that to heart, I wanted you to realize and be intentional about, you do have two homes. Yes, they're your, that's your father's house, that's your mother's house, but this is my house. And oftentimes, I wouldn't hear that ownership. And so I wanted you to have that ownership. Um, the other thing, like I said, me and you would have, you would come to me at times uh, with some, some heavy questions. And I remember you came to me. We were in the car. We were on our way to Target. And you said, Mom. I think you were probably like, mm, probably eight, seven, eight, somewhere around. And I don't know if Julius was born yet. But you said to me, um, Mom, I really, really do. You know, Julius was born. You know, Mom, I really, really do love you. But I'm curious. Why did my mom and dad work out? And I'm like, oh, right. I'm like, man. So I had to, you know, think very quick on my feet. And one of the things that I said to you, I said, sometimes, Marcus, you have two great parents. I said, but sometimes people are better off just being friends instead of husband and wife. And I said, I think your parents said, one, you had to be born. So that was one reason why they had to come together. But two, I think um, some people are just meant to be friends because, you know, they get along, they work well together. Both of you have both, you know, parents that are attorneys. And, you know, sometimes people feel like, hey, we get together and we have to be this power couple. But, um... It wasn't what it should have been. Yeah, they were meant to marry because they needed to have you. You needed to come into this world. And so I said that to you. Then I said, um, some people are just better off just being friends, and that's what they realized. Not that they hate each other. It's just that they were better off just being friends. And I, when I say I thank God for dropping that in my spirit because I believe that's what it is, because you would come to me often with questions um, that I had to respond to because if you're asking it, you want a response to it. So I, I thought that was, but do you remember that? Or do you remember feeling like, hmm, because again, you, when your parents um, divorced, you were two. Um, well, you were 15 months when they separate, but the, you know, the divorce was fine when you were two years old. Did you, as you got older, like I said, so pretty much that was kind of the norm right. for you. You didn't really know anything different. But as you got older, and I know you probably already repeated this, did you feel like, man, I wish I was just in one household. I'm tired of going back and forth. Or was it just one of those things like, oh, it's cool to have, you know, two homes. How did you feel? Can you uh, give me a, can you share that with me? Sure. Um, Yeah, I, I, it was definitely a process, I would say, of, like you said, asking mom and you and dad kind of like, okay, like, I know I'm in this situation, and I know this is the situation, and I know that this is the, the best alternative. But yeah, I definitely had questions. Um, I think when I was very young, I wouldn't necessarily idealize being only at one house um i just i think i just i just wanted i just wanted you guys i think was at the end of the day um again i feel like you guys did an amazing job at making me feel like full in terms of like we got you whether you're at one house or whether at your, whether you are at the other um i've realized as i got older that you know even if even if mom and dad did work out there may have been all these struggles like there may have been like this unhappy marriage and this it, it could have been an unhappy situation um you know i think about julius that i never would have had as a brother i think about you know honor that i never would have had as a sister i think about you know auntie and brad and c i mean i don't want to like call anybody out but like you know all the cousins and family that i never would have um known and come to love if a lot of these situations hadn't worked out the way they had so a lot of times i i i learned to 
cope with it like that. Um, and I and I never really tried to like focus hyper focus on like okay I really just want mom and dad to like be together and us to just have this like you know perfect household all this other stuff. Um, yeah, I, I was I was I was pretty content. Um, and I think the the truth of the matter is is that mom and dad have individually explained to me over the years like why they didn't work out um and each of them have their own story about why it didn't work out (laughs) which is always and of course when i would ask you you would be like okay well this is why it didn't work out so again i had these three different interpretations of you know the situation and and maybe why you guys have worked so hard to make this, this blended household work. Um, I feel like a lot of times I'm struck by that. Um, you know, it's a lot of sacrifice. It's a lot of forgiveness. It's a lot of, you know, a lot of the stories I hear are things that like happened to me when I was a baby, right? It's like, Oh, you know, the grandparents couldn't stand each other, you know, cause after, after mom and dad split, They were like, oh, you know, Marcus needs to be at our house. Oh, Marcus needs to be over here. Like, you know, kind of this, like, infighting. And when I think about that, I'm like, man, I can't imagine my grandparents today, the most gentle people that I know, you know, the people who love us the most, like, (laughs) that they were, you know, being petty, like, over over grandchildren, over over, um, their daughter and their, their, their son and all this stuff, so... Well, you were so loved. You were, you're thinking about it, your dad is the oldest uh, son. And although your mom has a sibling, but between your uh, grandparents, she's their only, they were, you know, they were the golden children. Not to say that the other children were not, because they're all very, very special. Um, But I think there's some significance to who they are and, and who you are, too. Um, uh, granted that they, you know, the grandparents of all their grandchildren, but everybody wanted a piece of Marcus. Everybody wanted a piece of Marcus. And like I said, when I met your dad and, and I'm so glad, you know, those days are behind us and, um, we all are a big, happy family, right? I feel like when I, when I came in, I didn't experience that type of tension. I didn't. Um, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but one of the things that your mom and grandma always say is like, Nika, you have united us. And you know what? And, and I receive that. If that's what, um, how they see it, I receive that. Um, I, I just think we are all on the same page with peace, no drama. Right. And we're just not wired. None of us are wired in a way where we want to keep drama going, right? I think True. our focus has always been let's make sure we provide Marcus with the best situation environment possible. But again, not always perfect, but let's provide him with the best situation possible. This has been a very insightful conversation. I've learned some things, Marcus, that I, I didn't know. And I, and I appreciate you being transparent. We may have to have a part two. Right. But to wrap this up and really help our listeners because I want this to be educational. This story time, I want people to pull nuggets and apply it as they see fit. But if you had to give a blended family, whether it's the parents, whether it's the kids, what advice would you give someone in a blended family, be it the parents or the kids? No, that's a good question. I think each blended family is going to have their own unique situations. I I have to imagine that for the parents, I think you just need to be very vocal about what kind of expectations that you have for your kid, um, you know, how you expect them to respect you, um, how you expect them to, um, you know, share Um, parts of their life with you because you know if you were depending on how much time they spent with you or how much time they spend away from you you know in the week in the month of the year right 
there are going to be bits and pieces that you miss um, in your child's life. Um, and so I, I think oftentimes it becomes easy to spoil or to treat or to try and make the household when the kid comes back like um, like Disneyland, right? It's like nothing, you know, when you come back to the house, you know, anything that you did wrong, like, will be forgotten and, you know, anything that you did right will always be right here. Um, but I think, you know, having some, like, being assertive with, like, what it means to, you know, if you, if you messed up when you left, you know, make sure when you come back that you, that we talk about you know, how you can do better, or like, what hurt you, and what hurt me, and, you know, again, not everybody's gonna be transparent like that, um, which is, but I think just as a parent, you need to set expectations, and then, I think also be open to forgive, um, I feel like a lot of times, it can be very detrimental, um, you know, to think about coming back to a household where, the parent can't forgive the kid. Um, you know, you just messed up so many times and, you know, we can never move past this. So I think there has to be some sort of conversation or at least um, vehicle for um, working through instances of trauma or instances of, of anger or forgiveness, all that kind of stuff. Um, I would say for the kid... Um... So let me just make sure I'm, <laughs> making sure I'm understanding. Okay. So you're saying in a yeah, parental yeah, yeah. situation... When, you know, you have a stepson, stepmom, stepdaughter, stepmom, or stepdad, or what have you, you're saying that because there's not always this flow of that child potentially being in the home, there has to be a system of, when there are infractions, there has to be a system of reconciling. There has to be an intentional system of, yes, when you left, we weren't on good terms, but we have to be intentional about reconciling, having a conversation, and making sure we're constantly working on our bond. Is that what I'm hearing from the parent? Totally. They got to facilitate yes. that. Yes. Yes, very much so. Um, and I mean, and the, and the opposite is true. Like, if there is, I'm not saying that it always has to be, like, something that was an infraction, but I don't think you have to pretend, like, every time you come back home that, um, you know, you should, you're you expected to be spoiled, um, right? Because you don't want... Cause, or, or, like, you're competing to make one household better, like, blatantly better than the other or something like that. Because right. um, um, it's not a competition, right? Let's just let it be your home, like I talked about earlier. These are your homes, right? It's not, you know, one parent is trying to make the house like oh like that you never want to leave make it like disneyland or you know let me make it so fun no you're not a guest you're a family member Mm, so we don't always have to be creating a situation where you're having fun let's treat each other like family that's what i'm hearing you say yes totally um and again from the kid i think it's it's very much a feel thing because especially depending on how young you know, you are when your parents did split up or you um, are engaged in this blended household, um, it can be difficult to accept a new parent um, as kind of this authority figure. I think Mm -hmm. it's very much a like, you know, who are you? How are you going to tell me what to do in my life? How are you going to tell me what to think? All these different things. But I think it, it is... I think you as a kid have to follow your gut and you have to give the parent and the other parents in the situation some level of trust um which again if you don't have trustworthy parents Mm. you i think have to be independent you have to be an individual and honestly it'll take a sense of maturity but you have to find the line Um, where you can offer your trust little bit by little bit to each parent. I don't think that just because you're blood-related, you have to necessarily blindly follow what your parents say because you now have 
a third authority figure giving you a perspective on life. Um, it's three different, you realize slowly that there are three different ways of being successful, of, of learning how to forgive other people, of learning how to be, um, you know, grow, um, and make friends and, and, and fall in love. Like, uh, yeah, I think you have to be, you have to be intentional about where you place your trust and giving it out. Um, I think you have to be, you have to learn how to be comfortable with the idea that, um, you know, there, there is no, I want to say like the one, right? Like fairy tale, the one out there. I think you have to realize very early on that like you can find love and you can find family. Like you, you really do choose your family. Um, but like I don't know what dynamic. other advice to give. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, what I think else you to, did. A, I think you did a good job. To, yeah. Like I said, if I could sum up what I heard you say, it's that you. You want each household, one, you have to build trust. So from a parental standpoint, you can't just go in trying to um, lay down the law and you have not, or give advice, or there's a process to growing that relationship. And it shouldn't be automatic that you feel like the person, you we automatically bond, we automatically respect each other. That's something that comes over time. Yes, you respect each other in the way that, you know, you're not, you know, being evil or malicious or anything like that. But I think in a, a parent, a blended family, the, the step parent has to build that relationship. And just because you're that step parent doesn't mean that it's automatic that you're able to impart or discipline. You know, that was the one thing that I, you know, I disciplined, but I would never, ever put my hands on you. Yeah, I may have had to get firm with you and collar you up some, but, you know, you know, I never wanted to be that parent to impart a form of discipline that was too harsh. Uh, right. Yes, I've had to, you know, take my my volume up a bit to make get my point across. But I think that came over time of us having a relationship that I felt that you could receive that from me. I don't think, um, you know, in a parental uh, step parent relationship that a person can just come in and right off the back feel like they can kind of like, you know, dictate and this is how it's going to be done. No, there has to be a level of, we have to grow to that. That doesn't happen automatically. And I think even for the child, you know, they got to grow to trust you. They got to see a a pattern of you respecting them. uh, You, you know, so it's, it's an exchange. So I think what I hear you say is that there, there has to be some growth there. It doesn't happen automatic. You know, when you go from house to house, know that that's your house. No one has to entertain you. That is your house. Uh, so I think it's very important for us to embrace that, um, that you have two homes and you're not a guest in that home. So you got to be a part of the chores. you got to be a part of all those things um, that help to make a house a home because you're not a guest. And I think that's sometimes um, what we fall guilty of is treating that kid that's going from house to house or treating them like a guest and they're not a guest they're a family member who is contributing to that household mm. no so, that's so true yep yeah that's what makes you feel you know like you're included marcus i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this conversation um I'm titling titling this uh, conversation is my three parents growing up in a blended family. I pr- I really appreciate your insight. You never know when you're going to come across someone, even in real time, that may need something, you know, that you have and that you would want to share. I would always encourage you to do so. Always encourage you to. Look for opportunities to pour into others based on what your experiences are because we all have a story to tell and it's based on our stories and our experiences that we can elevate and help someone else. If you enjoyed the story time, don't forget to subscribe on Spotify, 
Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. Leave us a review and share with your friends to help us reach more listeners. Stay tuned for more insightful stories. Until next time, take care and keep exploring new connections with us.